window material for DCI-M battery is a graphite material but it, it could be replaced by silicon anode material in the near future because of silicon material has a theoretical capacity about 10 times higher than graphite uh, anode materials. However, silicon uh, faces several challenges as an anode material for this ion battery uh, application. In particular, it has a very large volume change between initiation and initiation. This huge volume change will cause a particle fractures as well as a particle detachment from the conductive network. <coughs> Numerous studies have been shown that uh, using nano size silicon, you could solve the particle fracture problem. Uh, another challenge faced by silicon is a low electrical conductivity. And the solution for this problem is using carbon uh, coatings on the surface of uh, silicon particles. The third challenge faced by silicon anode is the instability of uh, solid electrolyte interface, which has been called SEI layers. Uh, this problem is caused by repeat, repeated fracture and reformation of the uh, SEI layers because of the electro-electrolyte interface continue move back and forth due to large volume change in the initiation initiation. Uh, one of the solutions to this problem is introduce the uh, engineer voice into the silicon particle. Because of this engineer voice, then volume expansion and shrinkage can be accommodated by these uh, engineer voice. As a result, electro electrolyte interface becomes stable and that also leading to the stable SCI layer um, uh, uh, layers. Uh, here it shows uh, the data come from my group and the black line here show you a silicon nanoparticles simply mixed with carbon black. And you can see that as the cycle number increases, the capacity increases. However, if you coat the nanoparticle with the carbon coatings, now you can see the cycle stability improve. If you further introduce the engineer voice, then you can see uh, you can see that cycle uh, capacity almost retain over 100 cycles. So clearly, show you that if you combine these three strategy, nano size, conductive network or conductive coating, and engineer voice together, then you actually could produce a high form of silicon uh, anode materials. Here is another example by combining three strategy I mentioned, and this is a well-known York Shaw structure. You start with a nano silicon particle, coated with the uh, carbon coating, and introduce the engineer voids between the coating and silicon anodes. With these uh, hierarchical structures, you can see the cycle st stability is very good. Indeed, uh, this work come from E-Trees, Professor e -trees group in Stanford University. After 1,000 cycles, uh, specific capacity still above 1,300 milliamp hours per gram. If we keep the uh, specific capacity at 1,000 milliamp hour per gram, then you can see that over 1,400 cycles, there's no capacity decay at all. Here is just another example. If you can combine three strategy I mentioned before, and and in this particular case, it is graphene coated silicon nanoparticle with engineer voice. And you can see that with this kind of hierarchical design of silicon nanoparticles, you could have a 3,500 cycles without capacity decay. So clearly, you can see that uh, design of a hierarchical structure combining three strategy I mentioned, a nano size, uh, conductive coating, and introduction of uh, engineering voice will lead to high performance, uh, long cycle life silicon. However, many of these uh, synthesis approach face scalability 
issues. Specifically, many of these methods start with a silicon nanoparticle, and which means very expensive material to start with. Furthermore, many materials uh, synthesis technique using HF as an agent to add uh, the silicon, uh, silicon dioxide to generate the engineer voice. And we all know HF is a very toxic uh, chemical. So as a result, uh, the process has become very expensive because it needed to handle this toxic material. Some of the processes even have a very complex synthesis step. As a result, products will be very uh, high cost. So many of these processes face uh, scalability issues. For us, we introduce a very simple, facile, scalable uh, synthesis methods, end up with a very low cost material. We start with a high energy ball milling of commercial powder. So that means uh, our starting material is a low cost, and then using high energy ball milling process to produce a, a large quantity of nanostructure silicon particles. And since a high energy ball milling is the industry scale manufacturing methods for nickel super alloy, so our process is, is the industry uh, a scalable uh, process. After you form the nano structure silicon particle, you do the carbon coating, and then you do the uh, sodium hydroxide etching to generate the engineering voice inside the uh, silicon core. And with that, you actually end up with a, a structure kind of similar like uh, 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 Yorkshire structures. So you could expect them with a very long cycle life of these. Now you can see that we using H, uh, sodium hydroxide etching. So this is a very environmental benign solution. So you can see the entire process is industry, industrially scalable and you will end up with uh, low cost products. And here I show you the SEM picture of the uh, uh, silicon powder uh, particles morphology and size. Starting powder, 10 micron size, after ball milling, become 200 to 300 nanometers. All right, and then after carbon coating and etching, uh, morphology and size doesn't change much because uh, all these processes, we are not expecting change at all. Uh, coating is very thin, about 10 nanometers. Etching, only etch the silicon core inside the coating. So you are not going to see any changes from SEM. Uh, here is TM, try to uh, find out what happens inside. So before sodium hydroxide etching, you can see that solid particle uh, is not um, very transparent to the electron beam. But after etching, now you can see that some regions, you actually have the uh, channels very bright. And remember, this is a transmission electron microscope, indicator all the electron beam are passing through the uh, particle. So if you have bright spot, or bright channels, indicator inside have a lot of porosity. And furthermore, this porosity is a nano channel shape. All right, and of course we call this as a silicon and voice at carbon um, micro reactors. All right. Now this is the Raman spectrums, spectrums to, in, to uh, find out whether or not we indeed form a carbon coating. So this is a virtual powder before ball milling. After ball milling, peak intensity goes down silicon. Uh, so because now we introduce a lot of defect. Therefore, peak intensity goes down. After carbon coating, you form the D band, G band. Clearly indicate now uh, we have the carbon coating. And after uh, sodium hydroxide etching, D band, G band still present. Indicate the etching doesn't attack the carbon coating, which is what we expected. But you can see the peak ratio, D band, G band, to the silicon peak ratio has been increased indicate that some of the silicon have been etched away, and which is our purpose. These are the typical voltage profile of uh, our charging discharging uh, profile for silicon and voice at carbon microreactor. Uh, we first uh, charging discharging at 1.5 m per gram uh, current density, 
And then we move on to six uh, m per gram of current density. Now, upper cutoff voltage we choose at one volt, and the lower cutoff voltage here we choose at 0.1 volts. This is uh, lithium. This is a half cell uh, data. Now, you, of course, you can decrease the uh, lower cutoff voltage to increase the capacity. But if you decrease the uh, lower cutoff voltages, then you're going to have more silicon expansion and shrinkage, and that may reduce the uh, cycle life. So basically, here you have a balance, uh, optimization between the cutoff vo voltage and cycle life. So for this particular uh, project right now, we're choosing cutoff voltage as 0.1 volts. Okay, so here are the cycle stability data. You can see that over 100 cycles with a current SD1 m per gram, we almost don't have any capacity decay, except that at the beginning, which you are using 0.5 m per gram for three cycles, and then it more or less becomes stable. One of the very interesting things about our powder is the initial couldn't be efficiency is very high, 91%. You can see that that's a first. And the reason with this very high uh, couldn't be efficiency is because our powder size is uh, 200 to 300 nanometers, and inside with a na nano silicon domain. And this is very different from the silicon nanoparticle. Typically, if you're using silicon nanoparticle, initial couldn't be efficiency is about 80 to 75 percent. So it's very low. But this one is very good. Let's show you the long term cycle st stability. From here to here is 1,000 cycles. And we are using extremely fast charging discharging rate, which is 8 m per gram. Now, if we magnify this region uh, here, show in the bottom, the first 300 cycles, you can see that there's no any capacity decay at all. However, after 300 cycles, you can see the capacity decay continuously. All right. Uh, even at the end of the 1000 cycles, specific capacity is still higher than uh, graphite uh, capacities. And of course, uh, this charging to charging can be done in three to six minutes, depends on the capacity. So this is an extremely fast charging rate. Uh, here, I'll show you another set of data for the current density 6 m per gram. And you can see that over 500 cycles, you eventually end up with a 600 milliamp hour per gram capacity. And of course, this is a about 100% higher than graphite anodes, all right? Since our material could charge discharge very fast, we actually uh, kind of want to find out whether or not our material have a lithium plating issues. Because for graphite, if you charging the charging rate was so fast, you're going to have a lithium plating. So to confirm that we, we don't have the lithium plating, we actually cream our half cell at different cycle numbers, 100 cycle, 200 cycle, 500 cycle, and 1000 cycle. And then we uh, examine the surface. Uh, so you clearly see there's no lithium plating at all, even though we are using extremely high current density per unit uh, area, like a 6.8 milliamp per centimeter square in this particular case. If you compare with graphite, you can see that uh, if you graphite anodes, if you're using 2.2, 3.3, or 4.4 milliamp per centimeter square uh, current uh, density, you can see that there's a lot of lithium uh, dendrite formation. Clearly, uh, and then at 4.4, almost entire uh, electro are covered by lithium plating. So this data clearly show that we have a very good uh, hydrate capability of our material. And the reason we have very high rate capability is because of uh, our hierarchical structure. So here we'll show you a cartoon. When the initiation happens, what might happen to our uh, microreactors? Um, so the uh, pink color of these uh, dots indicate the initial ion, 
and it will transport through the porous carbon coating. And of course, it will pass in through the uh, SEI layer, which will sear uh, the entire particle and prevent the liquid electrolyte in contact with the silicon electro uh, uh, inside. So once the lithium is uh, passing through the porous uh, carbon uh, shells, it will enter the uh, silicon core. And many of them actually will diffuse through the surface of nano channels. And then allow lithium ion to get into the center of the uh, silicon core very, very fast. And then there will lateral diffusion. And since we can uh, take in the lithium ion so fast, so the reaction number one will take place very fast. Once the reaction number one will take place very fast, then you don't have an accumu accumulation of lithium on the surface of the particle. Therefore, uh, the lithium plating reaction will be suppressed because of our hierarchical structure of that. Now, for practical application, I believe our powder still need a lot of improvement. Specifically, we need to improve long-term cycle stability to retain 80% capacity over 1,000 cycles. As I showed before, right now we, we lost about 50% capacity over 1,000 cycles. So need, this improvement needed to be uh, made. Another thing is what we need to do is we need to increase the silicon loading in the end to 40%. Uh, the data I show you right now, we have a 30% silicon loading in the end, which is very high already. But once you load more silicon, energy density will increase further. Third, we need to achieve high mass loading uh, of our active material per unit area, such as the data I show you is one milligram per centimeter. But we want to increase 10 times to the 10 milligram per centimeter. And then we will achieve the area capacity of nine milliamp hour per centimeter. Nine milliamp hour per centimeter square, the area density is about 100% higher than graphite annals. And if we can do that, of course, it's a big breakthrough uh, for the lithium ion battery. Okay, I like using this uh, slide to summarize my talk. Uh, the co we have done the cost estimation for mass production of these uh, microreactor powders. It is only one third of graphite and of um, material on the energy base. Uh, this cost estimation includes material cost, labor cost, and energy consumption cost. Of course, we haven't included profit in here. Nevertheless, that gives you ideas. So this is low cost material with a much better performance than graphite. So because of this process is an industry, industrially scalable process with low cost material, it has the potential to pave the way for widespread acceptance of electric vehicles by consumer, and making the electric vehicle more affordable and society greener and sustainable. Uh, before I end, take uh, any question you may have, I'd like to acknowledge significant contribution from my previous and current postdoc and graduate students. Uh, financial support from U.S. National Science Foundation with two projects, and use of the Center for Nanoscale Material, uh, supported by U.S. Department of Energy, as well as my no family endowed chair professorship.